Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, I looked at the new Assembly Workbench in the on sale version of FreeCAD. Today, I want to revisit that video to fix the assembly that I was working on and the problems that I encountered in that assembly and to give a few tips that I found whilst working with the Workbench for the third time. So I'm using the same version, I haven't updated it. And this is now my assembly. The first thing that I've done is tightened up the parts. If we look to the previous video, you'll notice that we had some gapping in here. A lot of the problems went away regarding the assembly breaking when I got rid of this gapping, which made things a lot stabler. And you'll notice that when I solve the assembly and move this part, you can see we've got nice fluid movement. One problem that I was having was figuring out how to place this part and fix it into this position. So before I was trying to make two fixed joints in here against both sides, I only actually needed one and that solved the problem. So you can see I've got the fixed one here. One thing I found out from an email to Brad is that if we click on one of these joints in here and press the space bar, we can see which constraint this actually is. So if I press the space bar to hide this one and press the space bar on this one, you can see I've got constraints against here on this side against this hole in here. You see that one there. And we can turn these all on so we can see where they are just by clicking on them and pressing the space bar in the tree view. So you can see our constraints are in there. And we can turn those off just by highlighting the ones that we want and pressing the space bar again. Now when constraining, I found that I used the wireframe view quite a lot. For instance, let's delete this fixed constraint here by clicking on and pressing the delete key. And for this type of constraint, I will just take the top hole and say this top hole, control click them. And create the constraint, which was the fixed constraint, which is this one here. So you can see that. And all we need to do is rotate this around using the rotate. And I use the page up to move this in increments of 10 or decrements of 10 into position, like so. And finally, have a look at this and just nudge this into position with. The up and down arrow key. Okay, that. Now, if I was constraining, say, this one here, see, we got two parts here with this hole. So this is constrained through these two circles. So it's a circle on this side, and a circle of this part, and the circle on this side down here and the circle on this part. So you can see once these snap into position, they can start getting a bit hard to constrain. So if I find the revolution for this one, so which is this one and this one, by pressing the space bar, so you can see those two there, I just selected those. And what I'm going to do is just control click them and delete them and reapply those constraints. So if I try to move this now, then you see, well, it's not constrained. Same with this one. So if these were in position, then it starts getting quite hard to constrain these. So if we come up to the view, draw style and use the wireframe, then we can get a wireframe view of our assembly. And it looks like some of them haven't turned into wireframe. I'm not quite sure why that is. But this allows us to have a view from the inside as well. So for instance, I can come in here and pick this circle and this circle quite easily and use the revolve joint. And okay that. And we can do all the same on the other side. So I can see that we have this circle here. If I look around to this side, we can see that we want to connect the V-link with this plate here. So if I look inside, I've selected this one. And I just need to select this one and then create our revolution and then hit OK. 
So I've used that 3D view option of the wireframe to create my constraints in here. And then I just come up to view, draw style and flat lines to bring that back in the style I had before. Remember, we've got the shortcut keys in there that we can use. Now, one thing that I said about in the previous video is regarding elements such as bodies. For instance, I have this joint plate here, and this is a body. So we can see inside here, we have a number of operations that have been taken from the original file. So there's a link between these. So anything we do in here will have an effect on the original file. For instance, if I imported in this base, at the moment, this is just a shape. If I re-imported this, and instead go for the body, then we have our base here. That's okay that. And that's say, I wanted to delete it. If I click once and hit delete, you can see I've actually unfolded the sheet metal workbench object underneath. And that's because we've got a link in there. The trouble is if we save the assembly, it will save the underlying files. So we have to be careful that the way around that is to actually use a clone as said in the previous video. So I'm just going to control Z that, and I'm going to remove the base from here, delete that. And we'll look at our original file, which is this one. This has all the parts in here. And you can see I've got the parts from the A2 plus assembly in here as well. You wouldn't have these parts, so take no notice of these. And what I'm looking for is the base, this one here. And I'm going to click it and come over to the draft workbench. So I'm going to drop this down, come over to the draft workbench, and we'll make a clone of that. So make sure it's selected, modifications, and clone. So we've cloned that part in there. I have a number of different files in here. I've actually got technical drawings as well, but you can see I've got the base clone in here. These are all my parts in here, including the technical drawing. So I can use that base part. If I save this, just going to hit Control S, and we'll come back to the file, which is the assembly file. That's come back to the assembly workbench. So now if I import, and if we look down, we see the base has a clone and we can import that and hit OK. So I can't edit this now. If I click on it and hit delete, then it's just removed from the assembly. We look back and look down. We still got the clone in our original file. So that's a much safer way to work. If you're using clones in here, any amendments to the original part will get reflected in the clones. So that's quite a safe way to work if you don't want that linking in there. One thing that I found that I like about this workbench that's really saved me a lot of time is being able to change the constraints. So if I make a mistake, say if I had this one and selected the shaft with this and control selected inside in here and made say a slide constraint, let's rotate that around and hit OK, then this may not be the right constraint that I need. So when I go in and start trying to solve this constraint, starting to move this about, I see that this is not moving. So I can quite easily come in and select the constraint, double click it and change it, the correct constraint, and then add any offset or rotation if needs be. and hit OK. Then I quickly resolved the problems that I had inside my assembly. So I hope you've enjoyed that update to the previous video that I did on the assembly workbench, and I hope to see you in the new one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero, or via PayPal, at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on 
so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.